everyone welcome to another rta tier list update and this time we got the tier list for the e7 world cup 2024 it's been a while since i updated my tier list last time i updated was at the beginning of the season right now we're around halfway a little bit more than halfway through and we have also the e7 world cup right around the corner they're going to be played on this patch before we to jump into more details guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't and like the video it helps out a lot all right guys let's start up with a, a very very fast summarize on how this tier list is uh, organized triple s tiers are like the best units in the game you're going to see them every match basically uh, double s tier are mostly the units that complement or hard counter the triple s tiers and then s tier are more the slightly more niche units but that you still draft them often like on every three games every other game you want to draft one of these units they're niche and they do their niche very well and they're more four five picks right and then eight tier is, is kind of like the S tier but even on their niche they don't work or it's insanely rare to draft them or you have to draft specifically in a way for the unit to work right so that's the A tier and then B tier units I don't like units I want to have a revamp units I want to have a buff units that don't work etc so that's how the tier list is organized and we start with who I think is the best unit in the game I think None other than New Moon Luna, the latest ML5. Yes, I think this unit is absolutely busted. I think she's the best unit in the game by far. Uh, RTA, it's not impossible to fight her. We've been trying to use uh, units that uh, have passives on their, their skill trees, right? Like uh, ML Akadis or Sage Baal, right? Where they push 20% when... Uh, at the end of the turn, we've been trying double cleanser drafts, we've been trying a lot of things, but here lies the problem. If your opponent pre bans Zeo and Bellion and first picks Luna, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to beat Luna at that point. So, yeah, and not just that, you can also play her for more slow people, like these are for the fast Luna players. Even for the slower people, she's amazing because you can play her on Ethica Scepter. It's kind of crazy. She just S2s every turn and then boosts herself 50% every turn. It's just crazy and you can build her tank if you're slower, right? So this unit's really, really, really hard to beat. And she deals with almost every unit in the meta. We, we, we used to joke about strip into seal and then it happened, right? It was a joke until it happened. And so she deals with almost all the units in the meta right she deals with phantom polities with the seal and buffable ace that's genua right etc she's not 100 unbeatable but she she has to be the best unit i've ever seen in this game and the hardest to beat for sure right now um to beat her you kind of have to draft uh, cleansers right but cleansers are not very good so uh light drafts usually help if they don't ban bellion bellion drafts right uh, are pretty good versus her but and then you can also try units like infinite horizon Achilles and sage ball for i guess the more aggressive luna comps i've uh, been having some success with it and against uh, um slow this slow ml luna comps on etica setter uh big cleansers that uh, heal a lot and cleanse every turn right like destina as of i've also been been working for me but uh, if you're struggling versus her don't worry it's not a you problem it's a luna problem she's actually insane insane and really really hard to beat in this current patch almost impossible to beat in this current patch we really 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 need solutions for her asap after that i think ml phantom polities right i think she's the clear second best unit in the game in my opinion combos really well with you uh, you already know her passive right denying fighting spirit and resources right it's just op i think after that, we have Blood Moon Ace. I think between the last year list, Blood Moon Ace versus Senya War, right? I think Blood Moon Ace came out on top a by a tiny bit. I love Bl uh, Dragon Knight Senya though, especially on Bastion of Perlucia. But I feel like Ace on... Uh, dude, if you're trying to aggro on Ace, then it just counters on Celestine, right? And procs, it just goes back to full. As you know, it's just complete nonsense in that sense. So I think he was the clear winner of the Ace versus Senya War. 
Pereira. Let me know what you guys think about it on the comments, by the way. What if you guys also agree that Ace won the Senya Ace War? Obviously, Knock Wall still up there. This unit, it's really not. I am all guys. It's a really not fun unit. I, I no longer have as much fun playing her as I used to have, and I absolutely despise fighting her. I think I, I think everyone has this feeling. Um, I wish they could delete her, but. I don't think that's gonna happen, so at least, I don't know, at this point just give us a, a cleanser that both deals with Nakul and Luna at the same time, maybe, and Palti's at the same right, time, right? Like, debuffers are so strong right now. Genu is still up there, IMO is still a crazy damage dealer, he's still the best DPS in the game by, by, by far, right? His damage feels like he's out of Epic 7 and from another game, right? So, yeah, I, I still maintain it. If, and his DPS are not very good right now. I just realized, it's the, he's the only DPS, like pure DPS, that's on the triple S tier. All, all other DPSs, like uh, Ran and you are more the, on the opener DPS side, right? So yeah. Uh, Death Dealer Ray. Um, I, I did a mistake last year at least putting Death Dealer Ray so low. It, this unit's uh, absolutely uh, busted. It's really, really hard to fight Death Dealer Ray fair, fairly, right? AKA on turn 2. And uh, he's one of the best units to deal with uh, Laia at the same time. And units like Blood Moon, Ace and Senya with his injury. You simply cannot fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with the amount of injury and control he's dishing out. Out, right, it's more slower comps. Right, it's really, really hard to deal with that. Dealer rain, deal, deal with uh, uh, almost everything. So, to deal with him, kind of some most of the times wanted to go on a faster, more tempo drafts against him. I usually use uh, units like Knock Wall, Lewis uh, uh, resets against him, or like ML Polities plus Genua, right, and just kill straight up kill him. And sometimes I use Laia as well, even though he's good versus Laia, but at least Laia can cleanse once, right. Um, you can also use uh, units like uh, Sharoon plus a Tyrion to deal with uh, Death Dealer Ray. You might ask, but why a Tyrion? It's just so because uh, a Tyrion kind of counters Sharoon, right? But yeah, you can also use units like ML Sharoon to try to deal with Death Dealer Ray. But it's harder to draft Dragon King Sharon nowadays. Uh, obviously, Laia is still Laia. Right, she said, she, Laia is the clock, is the epic seven clock. From now on, every unit that comes out needs to be able to win the game at the same time Laia starts soul burning or before Laia starts soul burning her S3, right? So she's the new epic seven clock. A new addition to my triple S tier, guys, ambitious Tyrion. This unit is everywhere, right? Is one of the best Aureus Knights and the best in Operation Knights uh, to be played, especially as a turn two. Uh, because of his He's uh, passive, right? He's alright versus Knock Wall. He, he's gonna cleanse the bind so your ML land is on, your Abyssalian Phoenix can counter, even though you're gonna be reset, right? But they, at least they can counter. And she, A Tyrion also forces the seal to be landing land on himself, right? Giving you a lot of time before the Knock Wall starts to really truly control you. A Tyrion's also good versus Dragon King Sharoon, right? So he doesn't land a defense break, making pair really really well with Death Dealer Ray. Uh, he combos with ML Polities with the Enrage, right? Um, so the faster a Tywin builds. This is the type of unit that has a lot of builds. You can play him like 260 speed on Bastion of Perlucia. You can play him on Protection Set Aureus much slower, right? He has a lot of different builds and is always useful. Soul stealing, a lot of control, cleansing. One of, one of the biggest things about him is that he's a cleanse that does not press button right so he's off turn cleanse and you don't have to press buttons to cleanse meaning that units like Celine right is good into units like Celine a time is pretty much every every match also another combo with a time that I found out the other day is a time plus a well deals with run right they cleanse everything uh, um, from runs defense break and steam so you don't die uh, so yeah this ambitious time is really really strong right now for sure the best Aureus knight in the game right now and he does he has multiple builds that work uh, uh that work with him so i do heavily recommend drafting a tywin okay guys also another thing about a times for example if you pair him with c phantom parties as i said about the rage ignore fres he also deals with a lot of uh ml parties uh answers like uh the gen poly so you don't get crown stunned by her s2 and units like um, benevolent broman Roman, right? Uh, because benevolent Roman uh, debuffs is low chance, and then you cleanse one of them, you cleanse the death break, etc. Eventually, you cleanse the other one on your second turn. So, yeah, ambitious Tywin, definitely deserving of the triple S tier. 
and one of the new additions. Then we have Dragon Bright Sanya. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I think Ace we slightly favored. <laughs> ended up being slight and on top of that, but I love Dragon Bright Sanya. I use her on Bastion of Perlucia, but 3F is also amazing. But I think Bastion of Perlucia is an overpowered artifact and it combos really well with units like uh, uh, Midnight Gala Lilias, right? So uh, units like Polly, because Gala is going to be have three buffs, right? Gala. Polly, this can push her back, or uh, like uh, Lua can't reset her, etc. So I still love Dragon Bright Sanya. Also, Dragon Bright Sanya is one of the best, if not the best, anti cleave unit, right? They just proc her, she's, she can't die because she's too tanky, right? And then if she procs, and then she has trees and reverse cleaves. So I, she's still for sure is having of the triple S tier. And then, then we have Zio Pay Run. I don't think much need to be said about this, uh, but these are still like the best cleaver units or uh, uh, anti-opener units, right? Run and Pera and Zio. So they're, in my opinion, definitely deserving of the triple S tier, especially since we have the band protection on three, right? And that's pretty much it. I think the meta it revolves mostly around these top units, right? On the triple S tier. And then let's go to the double S tier, the units that really, really complement your triple S tier drafts, right? So on top, I, in my opinion, I think Requiem Rowana is beyond <laughs> busted. So I put her on the highest tier of the double S tier. I almost wanted to put her triple S tier because if you think about it, all cliffs evolve Rowana and Ludwig nowadays, right? Like, and with her buff, you, even. You can even put Pyro or Ran on 3, and you don't have to care about Poly plus Abyssal Fine, right? Or Abyssal Fine, because you, you have the extra turns because of the, her recent buff. She can play around, she get, gets multiple boosts. And I feel like to cleave nowadays, and not even just to cleave, right? I, even to answer Death Dealer Ray, as I mentioned earlier, I use units like Lu and Aqual, etc., right? Another unit I use a lot is Requiem Rowana. Imagine you're drafting like turn two normal, uh, like a, a basic draft, right? A basic turn two draft would be like Laia, Carmin, Nakwal, and you have access to last two picks. And if your opponent goes Death Dealer Rain also slow downs, you can go Requiem Rana. You don't have to play Requiem Rana if you're only if you're playing Polities or Pyro or Ran or Zeo, right? As long as you know you are having turn one priority, you can always go for Requiem Rana. And she's another way to deal with Death Dealer Ray with the resets, right? Um, so yeah, I feel like nowadays to cleave you are forced to have Rakim Rowana she's insane so that's why I put her on the top of double S tier and the same applies to Midnight Galilius but I think Gala Lilius is only as good as your gear is. I feel like to take full advantage of Gala, you need her 290 plus speed with at least 4k attack, 300 crit damage. So it's really hard to build her. But if you have that Gala, I think she's amazing, right? Um, one of the best units to deal with Laia, the tanks, right? Laia, Tywin, Ace, to Senya, right? Uh, you just one shot them. Albedo, I put her super high because of the 3F build, uh, where you go no crit chance. No crit damage, you just go like a Karina build, pure bulk, pure HP, pure speed, some effectiveness because she has a death break on S3 and a strip on S2. So, and that build is really, 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 really strong. She does a lot of damage, she provides a lot of mitigation. You can also play her on protection set Aureus, which is also very good. But I, I mainly put her double S because of the 3F build. She becomes a carry that deals with units like Gala. Gala won't be able to kill anything, plus, she just kills Gala. Uh, She's even good versus Blood Moon Ace because of the, again, death break into unbuffable. This unit's really, really strong. Her mitigation is really, really good. Um, so yeah, you mainly want to play her into cleave comps, right? Uh, super hyper aggressive comps. And you want to play her into uh, Midnight Gala Lilias, right? And stuff like that. So yeah. And again, as I said earlier, we have two builds for her. The 3F, Aurea, uh, the 3F like a Karina build or the protection set Aureus. Uh, then we have Lua Conk. Um, I rated these units lower last time. This time, after all this time that's passed, me playing the season, etc., I realized I was using Conk and Lua a lot, especially Lua, but I have a really, really good Lua, so it's a little bit biased there. But yeah, uh, to deal with units like Death Dealer Ray, as I said, right? Death Dealer Ray Monk, you kind of need Conk and Lua to deal with them. Um, not always you're able to have the Laia, not always you're able to have the Bunny Dom, right? So units like Lua, Kong, they still deal with Monk, they still deal with uh, Gala, they still deal with a lot of units, right? So hence I put them so high. 
And uh, yeah, I've been using them a decent amount. As I said, Lua, really, really nice versus Genua, Nakwall, Death Deal Array, Conk, really, really nice with the Midnight Gala, uh, Candy, right? Or to counter those units. Um, next up, we have Celine, Carmen, Polly, Belly, and I don't think much have changed about these units. You are, we're going to see them every other game if not or, or in the pre-ban right candy dude i feel like lately i lose a lot to navy, navy captain lady uh and the bcl are still amazing seed wonder still still the best imprints uh, eternal wonder ludwig if you want to cleave you kind of have to lose ludwig uh aol still a menace and again as i said versus ran aol italian right deal with units like ran and pair up and then we have a, another addition to my double s tier arbiter builder okay guys i've been playing a lot of rb with because arbiter got the an ee recently and I mean, it turns out giving a unit 30% attack for free is kind of overpowered. And I feel like I low-key think he's OP. I, lo I really like him. He, he does a lot of damage, right? And if you gab with the Alexis basket change as well, where you basically are guaranteed to have at least attack buff. And uh, yeah, I think we're back to gab and win. You know what I mean? You guys remember that, those days where, ah, uh, well, let's just pick Arby. If we gab, we win. I think we're kind of back to that. I feel like if you gab with RB plus the E buff, you'll just do destroy the enemy team. Even if they're knights, right? If, even if they have a heavy tank down team, you'll do a lot of damage. So yeah, I've been liking RB a lot. He's also very good against units like Celine, right? Celine, if Celine jumps into him, he revives and then just kill everything if you gab. But he's really bad into units like Nakwall, uh, Luna, even like Blood Moon is kind of depends, right? Depends on the team because he might be too tanky. But I've been liking Arby a lot, a lot lately. I think he's a really viable DPS and a real option. So I put him double S tier. We'll see if he maintains that tier or if I'll put him down on my next update. But I tell you right now that Arby is pretty good. It's pretty fun. I tried the DGN Arby, the slow counter Arby, because his, his new E also gives him invasion. I didn't like it. I just go full damage Arby, man. I'm full damage. And I'm 240 speed, you can go attack boot if you want to, but I prefer taking two turns with RB than only relying on his revive. So yeah, but just go full damage torrent, a lot, a lot, a lot of damage, and you'll do fine with him. And I think this is mostly how the metal revolves around nowadays, it's around these units and drafts that are around these units which are sometimes or most of the times complemented with the s tier units right such as uh, fire ravi shu a, a new addition to my s tier infinite horizon achilles i put her here because of luna and nakwall i think she's a pretty solid option to deal with luna nakwall uh, against luna but uh, achilles has a big problem i feel like she's impossibly hard to build you know what i mean she needs to be 250 speed she needs to be decently tanky she needs to have like 250 fres and then here is another problem i guess luna you really want to cut artifact like eternus or soul constellation to get extra cr boost because if you're 250 speed you can cut the opponent's ml ludwig like he burns luna and then you get the CR push plus Eternals or Soul Constellation, and you're gonna push ahead of the enemy's Ludwig, ML Ludwig. Uh, but at the same time, you want Ice Crystal because you need the extra sustain versus non ML Luna Cleaves, right? So it's one of those units that requires two artifacts, or she's impossibly hard to build. Um, but I still think she's decent versus some Luna drafts, so and some Nakwall drafts and some Death Dealer Ray drafts, right? Since she's a, a cleanser that takes a lot of turns, as cleanse every turn, right? So she can keep up with the said units debuffs but it's hard to main keep her alive uh, but that's the reason why i put her on the s tier mainly to fight luna knockwall and death dealer ray and they tell me not bad either <laughs> we have Billy Dika and we have another uh, addition to my s tier fire araminta i think this unit's pretty pretty good again right s tier so she's a four or five pick you don't see her that often, but she's really, really good at dealing with super slow down comps. So if you need an answer to Death Dealer Rake, a time in Albedo comps, for example, 
it's a fire error meter because um, you build her to like around 270 speed. I'm gonna do a, a, a I have to do a showcase video for her so you guys can see her in action. But yeah, you build her around 270 speed, super high effectiveness, and then against these slow comps, right, with Death Dealer Ray, Bishi's Time, and all that, they're going slower, right? You just pick her a minta S2. Abyssal Crown stun them, S3, Finger Snap stun them, right? And just control them from that point. So she's really, really good at fighting Death Dealer Ray. Then up we have LQC. I still like this unit a lot. Karina fell down a little bit. There's a lot of true damage going on. She's still uh, all right, especially with the Sylvian Sage Vivian. We're going to see more Sylvian Sage Vivian and she's good versus that. Um, Destina, I again... Uh, Against Emma Luna, you need cleansers, right? Especially cleansers that can keep up cleansing consistently. And Destina is one of those. So I like picking Destina versus Luna comps. Slow down Luna comps. So basically my rule lately has been if they're going Luna Hyper Agro, Luna Cleave, I go Akadis, Akadis because I need to cut, right? And if they're going Luna and slow down, right? Luna with Knights, etc. I go Destina because uh, she has more healing, more sustained revive, but both of them can keep up with the cleanses, right? Uh, next up we have Briseri. She also got an EE, but I feel like her EE doesn't change much. Unfortunately, she's good, but she's alright. Uh, and I think we all know about him. Veronica still one of the best imprints. We have Mediator Kaveric, fell down, late, has been falling down lately. I feel like this unit needs to be immune to resets to be actually truly good. Sharoon, Jekyll, Vildra, not much to be said about this. Sage Ball, honorable mention, because uh, of his CR boost, it's good versus Luna when they're going Luna Hyper Agro. Uh, Faithless Lydica, Shaltier, we've been seeing some Shaltier, right, on the World Cup. Next up we have LPK. Last piece, Karin also got a buff recently, recently-ish, but unfortunately, LPK is only not higher because people are building immunity on their knock walls and tanky on their knock walls, so LPK just can't kill, man. Like, I, I don't know, I, I, they need to, like, boost their damage by a tiny bit or something, because right now, even if there's no shields, etc., she just can't kill knuckles. People are building them tankiers nowadays, right? So she just doesn't do enough damage, because you have to outspeed, and then you have to kill, and then if you, right now, if you outspeed, you don't have the en enough damage to kill. So, unfortunately, that's why I'm not rating her higher. I think she's still a pretty decent unit, uh, but... Uh, I feel like she, she really needs a slight damage boost. I feel like LPK should only not be able to kill a knock wall if their HP ring or defense ring, right? Um, because fair, at least your opponent sacrificed effectiveness for being tankier, right? Or if they have shields, right? Because LPK ignores all mitigation and mitigation doesn't matter. But if they have shields, right? I feel like th those are should be the, the only two ways where LPK will not be able to kill a knock wall, but nowadays my knock wall is effective this ring and she survives LPKs but with like 2k HP or 3k HP left, so it's not like even close, you know what I mean? So unfortunately, I feel like this new unit needs a slight damage boost on her still too. Next up we have Sylvian Sage Vivian, another addition to my Astir. Uh, she got a buff very, very recent, uh, making her immune to debuffs, if you guys haven't watched my Sylvian Sage uh, RTA showcase. Um, I think she's... Uh, 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 I think she's solid. I think she, uh, it's what I, she is now. She's a viable pick. She can never be meta because ML Polities and Solitary exist. Right, denying the game mechanic, kind of like Bellion, but she, there are two. But Bellion, there's only one, but for Vivian, there are two units that like uh, counter her. So she, I feel like they could have went a little bit crazier with her buffs because of that. But she's all right. She does her job. She does. Um, she's good into knock wall. De Death Dealer Ray, uh, Luna comps, right? Uh, heavy debuff comps with not that much damage. She'll do very, very well. Also versus squishy comps, she'll do very, very well as well because she just goes S3 one-shot squishies or Soul Burn S1 into S3 one-shot their entire team. Um, so yeah, I think she became a very real viable pick. Uh, but then again, unfortunately, she has a lot of counters, right? The splash damage, right? Rimuru, Karina's, 3F, and then Solitaria. ML parties, etc. But again, she'll do well versus Knockwall, Death the Ray, Ambitious Tywin, uh, New Moon Luna uh, compositions. She'll do really, really well against those. But she's not the easiest to draft. Uh, but I've been liking her. I've been liking it, and I think she's deserving of S tier because she's very viable and very real right now. And that's pretty much it for my S tier. I think this is pretty much 
the units that we see often and working right and then we go back to a tier this is just the a and b tier guys these are the the bulk of the units let's say let's call it like that uh probably there's some units that could be higher down uh, on the a and b tier but the metal the meta right now mostly revolves around these units mainly these units the triple s and double s tiers but a lot of games there will be s tiers as well but um Honorable mission to ben Benevolent Roman is pretty decent at dealing with Sea Phantom Polities comps. Um, honorable mission to Immortal Wukong, I, I like this unit and it's good if your opens go like heavy, like if they go like Laia, Senya, Ace, then Wukong is actually pretty good. And I uh, think that's pretty much it on B tier. Okay. One might answer, why is Lionheart so low? It's kind of a protest B tier. She's probably A tier, but she's a protest B tier because I feel like uh, she's really bad right now and, and Smaget should do something about it. Uh, oh, another mention, I guess. Rylet also got a recent buff, uh, but unfortunately, didn't change anything about him. <laughs> He's basically the same unit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This, I think this is the, uh, the tier list for the patch for the World Cup. 2020-24. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about the tier list, what you let me know what you think about the meta, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.